potato. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Sally Bowery. Good afternoon. First at four, former Liberal staffer Brittany Higgins is in sit-down talks with the Prime Minister in Sydney. This is a live shot of the city building where the meeting is taking place. It's been two months since Ms Higgins first went public with allegations she was raped inside Parliament House. Political reporter Jennifer Beshwati is following the story. Jen, she's already met with Anthony Albanese. Well, Brittany Higgins is hoping to use her story and public profile to push for change to Parliament's workplace culture. Ms Higgins alleges she was raped in Parliament House by a colleague in 2019. She's been critical of the handling of the matter and wants the federal government to establish an independent body to deal with staff complaints. She spoke to Seven News as she was leaving the meeting with the opposition leader this morning. It was a very constructive meeting and I was um, very grateful for their time. What exactly would you like changed? Um, I'll speak to that further this afternoon. Anthony Albanese has praised Miss Higgins, saying her requests were modest and reasonable. She has shown incredible courage to speak out uh, on behalf of not just herself, but other women. As she's currently meeting with Prime Minister Scott Morrison, ACT Police has told Seven News that the investigation into the alleged rape is ongoing and there's no update at this time. Meanwhile, a former Coalition staffer who was sacked for performing a solo sex act on the desk of a female MP has made a report to police alleging he's the victim of revenge porn. And the man who distributed the photos to the media will be questioned by ACT Police. Thank you, Jennifer. The Health Minister says repatriation flights from India will begin as soon as possible once the suspension has been lifted mid-May. It comes as the Federal Government scrambled to shut a loophole that saw two Australian cricketers get back into the country despite the border being shut. Chris Reason joins us now. Chris, Adam Zampa and Kane Richardson managed to squeeze through. Good afternoon, Sally. The two cricketers are now holed up in hotel quarantine, refusing to make any public comment at all. But sources are telling Seven News they claim they booked those flights hours before the Prime Minister announced that pause on all flights from India. They say they simply booked tickets home via Doha on Qatar Airlines, arriving in Melbourne yesterday afternoon. That, as India passed, 18 million infections and yesterday recorded some 380,000 new new cases, another global record. The federal government is saying it will move to ramp up repatriation flights as soon as the suspension is lifted on May 15. But until then, it will uh, move just as quickly to close any travel loopholes back home. The Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, is saying that he was confident most pathways had now been closed, although the Health Minister, Greg Hunt, is hinting there could be more to come on that issue. The hubs to which people travel have overwhelmingly stopped taking those people and uh, we'll have a little bit more to say uh, on uh, the interim period subject to some deliberations. Now, Mr Hunt, speaking there after National Cabinet today, also revealed the nationwide vaccination total had reached 2,175,000 uh, as he announced another update to the vaccine rollout program that from Monday, Sydney's 10 GP respiratory clinics will offer AstraZeneca to over 50s alongside a handful of regular GPs ahead of the main rollout on May 17 for anyone in a hurry, Sally. But the Health Minister also stressed that people should not contact their GPs, the GPs will contact them. All right, thank you very much. Chris Reason reporting for us there. Dozens of people have been killed in a crowd crush at a religious festival in Israel. Tens of thousands had gathered for an all night prayer and celebration when the horror unfolded. Israel's National Emergency Service mounts a major disaster response. MDA received a report of a stampede where tens of people were critically injured. As an annual religious festival takes a deadly turn. MDA is providing response with hundreds of ambulances, thousands of volunteers. Early reports suggest a roof or stand collapsed, but the lethal event was the stampede that followed. Local reports say at least 38 people killed, crushed in the late night panic, more than 50 injured, some critical. All of a sudden we saw paramedics from Mada and whatever running by, uh, like mid CPR on, a, on kids. Scores of ambulances dispatched to Mount Merin in the country's north. Even Israel's military joined the rescue effort. 
I was there, he says, inside the festival with 60,000 to 70,000 people. No place to move. People started falling to the ground. A lot fell. Earlier, revellers had been celebrating Lag Boma, a Jewish festival near the tomb of a revered second century rabbi. Organisers had planned for 10,000, but had later suggested the crowd might be 10 times that. Prime Minister Netanyahu has described the tragedy as a terrible disaster. Tim Lester, 7 News. Police have put a huge dent in the drug supply chain, seizing almost 290 kilograms worth of ice, worth close to $90 million. The joint agency investigation uncovered 250 kilograms of the drug hidden in a shed in Kingswood yesterday. Another 40 kilos was found during a vehicle stop. They also seized $300,000 in cash, mobile phones and designer watches at a home in Woi Woi. Two men aged 28 and 40 have been charged. One man has been arrested and another in hospital after a high-speed police chase through suburbs across western Sydney. Andrew Denny is in Liverpool. Andrew, it was certainly a long pursuit. Well, the driver alleged to have led police on a 25-kilometre high-speed chase across Sydney last night has spent today here in hospital. It followed dramatic scenes when an undercover police car was rammed at an intersection in Cecil Hills just before midnight. Oof, his head's bleeding. The driver, a 23-year-old Shelby man, and his 24-year-old passenger were pinned to the ground by officers. This all began about an hour earlier when police spotted two stolen Audis at Bidwell. It's unusual to have a $80,000 vehicle driving around Bidwell. Um, that's what drew the attention of the police at the time. One of those Audis disappeared. The second began a chase that went through Blacktown, Rouse Hill, Borkham Hills, Bonnie Rig and Bonnie Rig Heights. There, police allege the men jumped into a second stolen car, a VW Golf, before slamming into police at traffic lights. A lot of police, yeah, there were police in all different angles. Elizabeth Drive from both sides, Cow Pasture Road on both sides. Their behaviour, um, it was just a matter of time, you know, before they had an accident and just luckily enough we were able to get him before anyone was injured. That passenger charged and later granted bail by a magistrate. The driver is expected to front court across the weekend. A garbage truck driver has found himself in a predicament in Sydney's west this morning. The truck was stopped in its tracks when it brought down power lines at Lidcombe. Firefighters isolated the power and safely removed the driver. Nicholas Street was closed for a short time while crews restored supply. It's been another smoky day across Sydney. Some of the city's tallest buildings barely poking out through the haze as hazard reduction burns are carried out. The Weather Bureau says possible light showers tomorrow might wash some of it out, but people with asthma or other respiratory conditions should take care. Coming up, we'll cross live to the RFS for the latest on their firefighting preparations and operations. Speaking of the weather, the smoke will once again settle over the city tonight, becoming trapped. Today, though, we reached a fairly pleasant top of 24 degrees around 2 o'clock this afternoon. Across the city, it was mostly the same story. A little bit cooler at Parramatta, 23 degrees there. Inversion will once again settle over the city and that will just trap in that smoke haze overnight. Around the capital cities for tomorrow, Brisbane, 24 degrees. Canberra, 22, with a little bit of cloud. Melbourne, 24 degrees, touch of cloud. Fine in Adelaide tomorrow, 28 and a top of 22 degrees is expected in the West. Still to come in Sydney's news on 7, the, an international drug bust worth $300 million, two city men arrested, their alleged role in the global syndicate. Chemical plant explosion, why the aftermath could be even more dangerous. Soon the Cambridges share a rare glimpse of their family life and a treasure hunt across the city this weekend. What you can win... What's the first thing you want every day? You want to know what's happening. A very busy morning ahead. Be informed. Nat is live from the flood zone. Be inspired. You won! Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Start your day feeling good. Come and join us. Bye -bye. On 7. Great news, you're all approved. Other kids are going to love it. Make your house more home with our lowest ever advertised fixed rate home loan. That's the Suncorp spirit. If you live for the thrill of the chase, 
if being outdoors makes your heart race. Whether you're conquering the finish line or just rolling around in the sunshine, new OMO triple capsules have got your laundry covered. Throw one in hot or cold for a clean like no other. It dissolves to erase stains that put up a fight, leaving a fresh fragrance and whites that are bright. So just pop one in the drum. Laundry easily done. OMO triple capsules. Laundry made easy. Always keep away from children. Should have gone to Specsavers. Get $150 off multifocals. Here you go, Mum. <laughs> this Mother's Day, be Mum's instant favourite with instant scratches. A journey by rail is beyond extraordinary. It's beyond unforgettable. And it's beyond magical. A journey by rail is, well, it's beyond words. Twenty twenty two dates are now available. Book your journey on the GAN, Indian Pacific, or Great Southern today at journeybeyondrail.com.au. A lot of people have sensitive teeth, but gum health is really important. The new Sensodyne Sensitivity in Gum Toothpaste not only deals with sensitivity, it also maintains gum health. Two benefits from one toothpaste. What a great idea. Aldi's low prices just got lower with reductions on a huge range of products like cheese, bacon, pasta, eggs, this, that, those, that. No, not that. Aldi, good, different. Bold is standing out, never blending in. It's unapologetically chunky and never thin. Bold is savoured, never swift. It's plentiful, rich, sensations ignite. Old gold is bold in every bite. Unpolished beauty. It defines our country. And at Stratco, it's what we do. Custom crafting, roofing and cladding solutions for remarkable Australian homes. Colourbond Steel's stunning matte finish. Brought to life by Stratco How To. Super Cheap Auto's catalogue sale is on now. Check out this new look Army Star tool cabinet. Only $479. Or this new Army Star safe case, just $34.99. Watching 7's 4pm Sydney News and this is the view from Blacktown this afternoon where smoke haze has eased for now. It's currently 22 degrees. Returning to our top story this afternoon, former Liberal staffer Brittany Higgins is in a meeting with the Prime Minister as we go to air. This is a live shot of the city building where talks are still ongoing. Ms Higgins is expected to make a statement soon. We'll bring you all the details on 7 News. Two Sydney men are behind bars, accused of playing a key role in a global drug supply ring. Australian Federal Police made the arrests after $300 million worth of the party drug MDMA was seized in the Netherlands. Alex Lewis reports. 19-year-old Anthony Squadrito and 46-year-old Tony Spitaleri did not apply for bail when they faced the Brisbane Magistrates Court this morning. The men were arrested in Sydney on Wednesday and extradited to Queensland. They allegedly belong to a syndicate that tried to buy part of an 850 kilogram shipment of MDMA bound for Queensland. This syndicate attempted to buy 150 kilos of MDMA. That has a street value estimated between seven and nine million dollars. But the drugs never made it. They were seized by police in the Netherlands. Australia has quite a large demand for illicit drugs and that, you know, is something that organised crime takes advantage of in our country. Thirteen people have now been arrested as part of Operation Parazonium, including a 50-year-old Sydney woman. Our frontline police face and deal with the results of drug use and drug supply every day. Police say they've prevented enough ingredients to make 15 million ecstasy tablets from reaching our shores. This is a great result for us and I think it's also an important warning uh, to organised crime. Squadrito and Spitaleri are charged with attempting to possess border controlled drugs and dealing with more than $100,000 in the proceeds of crime. Both face maximum penalties of life in jail if convicted.
Thank you, Alex. Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny has faced court after his recent hunger strike, lashing out at the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, calling him a naked, thieving king. The country's opposition leader appeared via video link after being found guilty of defaming a World War II veteran. His campaign officers will be dissolved as authorities look to ban them as extremism. He did look gaunt after ending his hunger strike on the advice of doctors. A freak hailstorm has smashed towns in Oklahoma and Texas. Those are baseballs, guys. Those are baseballs. They're, those are baseballs. Locals filmed as the massive stones rained down. The storm passed quickly, but its impact was lasting with widespread destruction. Homes and businesses were torn apart. Cars were also hammered, many of them now a write-off. A chemical plant has exploded in Missouri after a fire broke out. Homes within an 800 metre radius were evacuated as the inferno took hold. One firefighter was injured battling the intense blaze. It was extinguished but chemicals from the factory have leaked into the local sewer system. Specialist crews are now trying to contain the spill. It's been a busy morning for the space industry. China has successfully launched an unmanned module containing living quarters for a new space station. The module named Harmony of the Heavens was sent into orbit on board China's largest rocket carrier. The module is one of three main components of what will be China's first self-developed space station. It's due for completion at the end of 2022. Sydney siders looking for a new activity or reason to explore could score a free voucher while unlocking clues about our city. Secret tours are being held this weekend with $10,000 in vouchers on offer as the state government tries to breathe life back into the CBD. The first 2,000 people to complete the riddles will get a $5 voucher to enjoy a coffee or ice cream or they can put that towards a bill. Coming up in 7's Afternoon News, concussion concerns, head knocks in children linked to mental illness, what it means for kids' sport. Also the effort to clean up a site with a toxic legacy on the shores of Sydney Harbour. And in sport with Sherbo, Ricky in a rage after the Raiders lost to the Rabbitohs. Tonight on 7 News. A shocking home invasion in our southwest. New details on whether Sydney's worst serial rapist will walk free and how new technology is taking the hassle out of travel. The greatest blunder in the judicial system in the history of Australia. Crime Investigation Australia, Sunday on 7. It's time for change. New Omo Diluted Home Refill. It contains 50% less plastic. Mix it with water in a two-litre bottle and shake gently. Tough on stains, kinder to our planet. New Omo Diluted Home Refill. Chin up. Infinitely woman. J'adore. What a parfum infinitesime. The new fragrance, Dior. Discover your signature scent. Hit refresh! Hit refresh! Hit refresh! Boost your mind and body. Grab an Aussie apple and hit refresh. At Terry White Chem Mart, we're here to help this winter. That's why pharmacists like Bridget are trained to administer flu vaccinations right here in store. Book now. Walk-ins also available. Terry White Chem Mart. Now that's real chemistry. Sometimes even the best tenants can cause damage to your investment property that standard building insurance may not cover. Terry Shear, Australia's leading landlord insurance specialist, provides the cover you need for your property and rental income. Have confidence that your investment property is in safe hands. My property portfolio is protected by Terry Shear. I wouldn't trust anyone else. Call Terry Shear or go online. After 40, 
We need anti-aging care that works. Am I right, ladies? New Pure Retinol Night Serum from L'Oreal Paris. Our most potent retinol that renews skin night after night. So effective, it visibly reduces 100% of wrinkles. Even deep wrinkles. Powerful results validated by dermatologists. It's an anti-aging superstar. New Revitalift Pure Retinol Night Serum from Australia's number one anti-aging skincare brand, L'Oreal Paris. We're worth it. Tim's Starbucks Espresso Roast made his way at home with his Nespresso machine. Starbucks Coffee, make it yours at home. Hungry Jack's Yumbo's back. Two slices of melted cheese and five hot slices of ham on a sesame seed bun. To celebrate Hungry Jack's 50th birthday, the Yumbo's back. Just $3 at Hungry Jack's. A new study has revealed more than a third of children who suffer from concussion on the sporting field end up with a mental illness. Separate researchers also cast doubt on the AFL's controversial 12-day rule for a player who suffers a head knock. Nick McCallum has more. Two separate studies on concussion. One on children involved in sport, the other on amateur footballers have alarm bells ringing at sporting codes right around Australia. 17-year-old Emma Henry is a netball sharpshooter. <laughs> but two concussions a year apart have left her with mental illness. I was very anxious, I didn't want to leave the house. I had concentration issues and I couldn't really do much. I just kind of had to stay in bed. Murdoch Children's Institute research reveals among junior sports people like Emma with concussion, 37% later suffered depression or post-traumatic stress. 20% behaviours such as aggression or attention difficulties. Whatever intervention we're doing, whatever assessment we're doing of kids with concussion, we can't ignore mental health. Unfortunately, it's not good news for the Tigers. And the AFL's new rule of 12 days off after a concussion has been brought into question by new Monash University research. These are scans of amateur footballers after concussions. The yellow marks reveal there's still brain damage after two weeks. It does suggest that 12 days may not be enough and we may need to go longer. The AFL says it will look at this study. It's always willing to change its protocols if necessary, but at this stage, it's sticking to the 12 day rule. Sport now with Matt Shervington and Matt the frustration starting to show for Ricky Stewart. Yes Sal this has been coming for a couple of weeks the Raiders coach says he's sick of his side copying a raw deal from referees after last night's loss to Souths. Jack Whiten tried to get the Raiders home in the dying minutes but was denied twice in the space of three minutes for obstruction. Stewart slammed those calls and the lopsided penalty count. I look like a whinger um, which I don't really give a about being labelled the winger. The Rabbitohs finished 34 to 20, extending their winning streak to seven games. The Eels expect Mitch Moses to turn down a million dollar a year offer from the Broncos to stay with Parramatta on $900,000 a season. Oh, look, I'm not sure exactly, but what I do know is that the club is desperate to keep him and Mitchell wants to stay. Moses reportedly wants a four-year contract, but Parramatta want to sign him for just three years. Kane Richardson and Adam Zampa have arrived back in Australia after abandoning their Indian Premier League contracts. But Pat Cummins is staying on and took three for 24 for his Kolkata Knight Riders this morning. And Cummins gets three wickets. Why didn't he bowl earlier? Pribby Shaw had already smashed 82 from 41 balls and Marcus Stoinis sealed a seven-wicket win for Ricky Ponting's Delhi Capitals. Wanderers defender Daniel Georgievski has left the club to join Melbourne City for the rest of the A-League season. And City extended their lead to four points on top of the ladder with last night's 3-1 win over Newcastle. Back scoring again and that's 99 A-League goals for the number nine. It keeps the Jets in last place. Manchester United became the first team in 57 years to score six goals in a European semi-final. Bruno Fernandes and Edison Cavani each scored doubles in United's 6-2 thrashing over Roma. 
magnificent finish. But I to got to that. But it wasn't good news for Arsenal, who fell 2-1 to Villarreal. World champion skier Laura Peel has claimed Snow Australia's Athlete of the Year award for the second year running, although she had to share it in a three-way tie. Coming off her Aerials World title in Kazakhstan last month, Peel admits it's been a challenging 12 months. I had no idea if we would have a competition season at all, so very fortunate that we got our competitions off the ground. And... Peel shares the award with snowboard cross world champions Bell Brockoff and Jared Hughes. And it's shaping up very nicely for Australia's team heading off to Beijing 2022 for the Winter Olympic Games. I know, can you believe that? It's not that far away too. So thanks close. For that. It's amazing. All right, thanks for that, Shervo. Stay with us this afternoon's top stories are next. Gang attack, the terrifying Sydney home invasion caught on camera. How the owner escaped. It was the road rampage that rocked Newcastle. Next, a driver learns her fate. Clive Palmer loses a defamation battle. How much she'll have to pay for ripping a hit song off. And hazard reduction burns blanket Sydney. How long will the smoke last? We speak to the RFS next. I want Spider-Man! Then we've got good news. What is it? Over five amazing weeks. It's bigger than we thought. Seven Flicks is turning Friday night into Spidey Night. It's hard to believe what's happening. Five Fridays. Five marvellous Spider-Man movies. You do too much. You're not Superman, you know. Five action-packed weeks you won't want to miss. Spidey Friday. Tonight on Seven Flicks. Shoe Frenzy has kicked off with massive savings on footwear. Run off with huge savings like 20% off site-wide for Timberland. Don't walk. Run to clickfrenzy.com.au forward slash shoe frenzy. Hurry. Sale ends midnight Monday. for life. Rediscover the magic of the greatest Disney stories and share them with your children in this amazing book collection. Snow White, Bambi, The Jungle Book, all your Disney favorites in my little library. Issue 1, The Lion King, out now. I'd like a bar of chocolate, please. Your change. Happy birthday, Mum. There's a glass and a half in everyone. Maybe we could find ways to call time out on our kids' busy routines before they get sick. But if they do, Children's Panadol can start to reduce fever in just 15 minutes. Together, let's rethink care. New from Nivea, naturally good face care. Up to 99% naturally derived ingredients, plus 1% for stability and safety. For hydrated and naturally radiant skin. 100% transparency for 100% trust. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Sally Bowery. Good afternoon, welcome back to our Martin Place headquarters. These are our top stories on 7. Former Liberal staffer Brittany Higgins holds talks with the Prime Minister two months after she came forward with rape allegations. The Federal Government has scrambled to close a travel loophole after two cricketers were able to return home from India despite a ban on flights. Dozens of people have been killed in a crowd crush at a Jewish festival in Israel. And two people have been arrested after a 25-kilometre police chase across Western Sydney. A Sydney man has had a lucky escape after being attacked by a gang of intruders at his Liverpool home. They smashed windows and doors, forcing their way inside. Horrified neighbours describing the moment the chaos unfolded. Isabel Mullen has the details. Well, a man made it out of this Liverpool home just in time during a violent home invasion last night. 
CCTV vision shows a group of five people forcing their way into the home around 11 p.m. They rip the door frame off before trying to kick their way in, throwing tables and chairs at the glass door. They finally give up, breaking in through a window. I saw, uh, you know, four or five, uh, you know, blokes, Arab um, sort of descent. Yeah, they smashed it up. You know, they got rid of the door, the windows. The Tyndall Avenue home was trashed, but nothing was stolen. Police arrived within 10 minutes. The five alleged offenders tried to get away in a car, but were caught by police. Authorities have charged four men and a 27-year-old woman taken to Liverpool Police Station. One of the 29-year-old men allegedly assaulted a female constable. At the station, he was taken to Liverpool Hospital for a facial injury. Investigations are ongoing, but it's a hard afternoon for Jason, left to assess the damage and clean up the mess. Thank you, Isabel. Australia has moved to close a travel loophole which enabled people who had been in India to return despite a ban on flights. India's spiralling COVID catastrophe prompted the federal government to pause all flights until mid-May. But two Australian cricketers were able to return home yesterday, saying they simply booked their tickets via Doha. The Prime Minister is confident most pathways have now been closed, but Health Minister Greg Hunt has hinted there could be more on that to come on that issue. The hubs to which people travel have overwhelmingly stopped taking those people and uh, we'll have a little bit more to say uh, on uh, the interim period, subject to some deliberations. And the world has just passed a new COVID milestone this afternoon. There have now been more than 150 million cases of coronavirus across the globe. A wanted Victorian man has been nabbed in Sydney. Police pulled over a Holden Commodore in Bankstown last night, arresting the 43-year-old driver from Mildura. It's alleged a number of guns were hidden under the bonnet of the car. A cat was also found and taken away by officers. The man is facing a range of charges relating to firearms and weapons offences. A woman who went on a wild rampage through the streets of Newcastle has been sentenced to more than two years in jail. Christiane Bycroft was trying to chase down a former lover who owed her money. Ashley Hansen was in court. Good afternoon. A magistrate has slammed the actions of a driver who was behind a terrifying road rage attack here in Newcastle last year. Videos of the rampage went viral online and was shown to the court today. Christiane Francis Bycroft used her ute as a weapon, trying to chase down her partner for just $300 in November. <laughs> The 29-year-old rammed his car a number of times and even ran him off the road. The wild chase continued through Newcastle CBD for three minutes. Four cars were damaged and countless lives put at risk. The magistrate described Bycroft's actions as dangerous and despicable today before jailing the young mum for 28 months. Bycroft's lawyer told the court the 29-year-old felt utter shame and regret over her crimes. The court heard she'd suffered years of abuse in a toxic relationship with a man who squandered her family's inheritance and the $300 she was chasing was all the money she had left. Bycroft cried during her sentence. She's been in custody since the day she snapped. She'll be eligible for parole in March next year. Thank you, Ash. The smoke haze lingering over Sydney for much of the week has intensified today as hazard reduction burns continue. For more, I'm joined by New South Wales Rural Fire Service Inspector Ben Shepherd. Thanks for your time this afternoon, Ben. Now, hazard reduction operations are ongoing, but you are trying to limit the impact of smoke on the community. Yes, Sally, over the, the, the last week we've been obviously undertaking this important work while the weather has been in our favour. Uh, we've cut a number of these burns up to limit the overall impact of this smoke and we're doing that daily. We're trying to actually limit that smoke. But uh, we did see it uh, close in on Sydney this morning underneath that inversion. Uh, but uh, good news this afternoon, we've, we've seen all that air uh, quality return to good across the Sydney uh, and the wider area. So uh, more burns to come, though, obviously in the coming days. And when you say that, how long will these operations continue for? How long can we expect this to linger around? 
Yeah, look, at this stage, it looks like uh, we, we could see some wet weather by mid-next week. Now, how much will determine how quickly we can get, actually get Burns um, done after that. But look, this is some of the best weather in more almost 12 months. Uh, we haven't seen these kind of conditions in a long time. So we are playing a bit of catch-up. So while that's occurring, people can expect to see and smell that smoke. OK, and f advice for locals in those affected areas over the coming days. What can they do? What should they do? Yeah, look, obviously keep yourself informed. If you, if you do suffer from breathing difficulties, things like asthma, uh, it's a good idea to keep your door shut. But we should see the worst of the conditions in the morning. But importantly as well, have that preventative uh, medication on hand and that reliever medication on hand. But of course, if you need that medical uh, advice or, or assistance, please seek it. But this important work, we need to do it ahead of the next bushfire season because it does redu reduce the risk to properties in areas that didn't burn during that horrific 1920 season. Yep, exactly. All right, thanks for that, Ben Shepard there this afternoon from the RFS. Businessman Clive Palmer has been ordered to pay one and a half million dollars to a heavy metal band for using its tune in his election ads. The billionaire originally flinched at Twisted Sisters licensing fee but will now cough up much more. Michelle Jensen reports. A federal court judge has ordered Clive Palmer to take down the ads online, ruling in favour of an 80s metal band suing the former politician for a copyright infringement. Twisted Sisters' rock anthem, We're Not Gonna Take It, was used in Mr Palmer's 2019 election ads, with the lyrics changed to Aussie's Not Gonna Cop It. He had asked to use the popular jingle in the United Australia Party's campaign and was quoted $150,000. But the billionaire businessman didn't want to pay. The cost has ended up being 10 times the original quote, with the federal court ordering Mr Palmer to pay $1.5 million in damages. He testified at a trial claiming he didn't think copyright rules applied because the melody had been used in a Christmas carol. But the judge found he gave false evidence, concocting a story. And he knew he needed a licence, but decided to go ahead without one. She said Mr Palmer's conduct was high-handed and contemptuous. Lead singer and songwriter Dee Snyder is celebrating, tweeting, we're not going to take copyright infringement anymore. And it's over, baby. We won big. But it may not be over just yet. Clive Palmer says he and his lawyers are reviewing the judgment and considering an appeal. A parole bid for notorious gang rapist Mohammed Skaff has been delayed by four months. He was convicted as a 17-year-old, along with his brother and 14 others, for the rapes of Sydney schoolgirls in the lead-up to the 2000 Sydney Olympics. State authorities are waiting to see if his prison classification is downgraded and how best to reintegrate him into the community. Radioactive soil left from a uranium processing plant on the shore of Sydney Harbour is to be dug up and shipped to the United States. Tom Hartley is at Hunters Hill. Tom, the toxic legacy has been blamed for cancers and deaths among residents. Well, Sally, behind that black fence is the contaminated site in question, where more than 100 years ago, a uranium ore processing plant was in operation between 1911 and 1914. But it wasn't until the 1920s that it was sold off and subdivided with families building homes and moving into them, completely unawares of what had happened there before. Some found out in the late 70s it was contaminated. Others only found out in 2008. That's when a commission of inquiry was launched. Katie McGrath wrote a book about her tragic experience. Her young parents bought a home on one of the blocks and both developed rare and deadly cancers. They passed away when she was four, orphaning her and her three siblings. I wouldn't call it a victory for what's left of my family because this won't bring my parents back. They died 45 years ago after unknowingly buying their dream property. Well, today, in a rather stunning development, the government issued an apology. I apologise uh, on behalf of successive governments, but what we have here today is we have a solution uh, that has been long in the making, uh, but we have one, and I've got to say uh, uh, it's great news for the residents here. Also announcing they'll be carefully excavating around 1,800 tonnes of contaminated earth before sealing it up and shipping it to a facility in the US. And Sally, after being promised action for more than five decades, residents say it'll be time to rejoice once they see shovels in the ground. Thank you, Tom. Still ahead on 7's afternoon news, vandals target a business, the shocking attack caught on camera.
Joe Biden's pitch to the people doesn't go to plan. Why he was heckled by his own supporters. A breakthrough in the search for Lady Gaga's stolen dogs. Five arrested, including the woman who returned them. And it's a glorious 22 degrees in Perth this afternoon. I'll have the forecast soon. Nestled in the mighty Murray River. This is magnificent. A succulent feast to make taste buds quiver. Has me salivating. A zesty treat of juicy meat. Voila! <laughs> With salivating aromas and flavours from heaven. New Better Homes. Tonight at 7 on 7. Great news, you're all approved. All the kids are going to love it. Make your house more home with our lowest ever advertised fixed rate home loan. That's the Suncorp spirit. It's time for change. New Omo Diluted Home Refill. It contains 50% less plastic. Mix it with water in a two litre bottle and shake gently. Tough on stains, kinder to our planet. New Omo Diluted Home Refill. Are you ready to quit smoking? Ready to start tasting again? Ready to stop coughing? Are you ready to get your breath back? And start saving money? When you quit smoking, things improve quickly. When you quit, you win. Get the top 10 tips to quit successfully at iCanQuit.com.au or to talk to a qualified counsellor. Call Quitline on 13 78 48. Cracker chips. Oven roasted by Arnott's for a mouth-watering snack. Arnott's Cracker Chips. Oven roasted. Delicious flavour. Here's something new to shimmy into. For NRL this Thursday and Friday, if your team scores a try in the first five minutes, you win. We'll pay you out straight away. Bet on the footy with Sportsbet. Peace of mind. It's hard to find these days. Fortunately, Glen 20 kills 99.9% .9 of germs and viruses, including COVID-19. Glen 20. It's peace of mind you can hold on to. Are you ready to quit smoking? Ready to start tasting again? Ready to stop coughing? Are you ready to get your breath back? And start saving money? When you quit smoking, things improve quickly. When you quit, you win. Get the top 10 tips to quit successfully at iCanQuit.com.au or to talk to a qualified counsellor. Call Quitline on 13 78 48. We're celebrating 50 years of flame grilled flavour. The flame grilled smoky barbecue flavour you just can't get from pan frying. Flat fried, flame grilled. Taste the difference. After 50 years, the burgers are still better at Hungry Jack's. They've travelled all seven continents. I worked in Antarctica. They've experienced it all. My goodness, four near-death experiences. Do these globetrotters have what it takes to beat a quizzing master? Correct. Joyce, correct. One of the closest finishes you'll ever see. Stop the clock. New The Chase, weekdays on 7. The world's biggest plane has completed a second successful test flight in California. It's nicknamed Roc after the giant bird of Arabian and Persian mythology. Owned by aerospace company Strata Launch, it rose as high as 14,000 feet, travelling at up to 320 kilometres an hour. The giant plane is designed as a carrier aircraft to launch space satellites at high altitude. Joe Biden has had a frosty reception as he takes his big spending plan for America's COVID recovery to the people. The US president was heckled by his own party base at a rally. David Woywood has more from Washington, D.C. Yes, a major milestone, 100 days in office, but 24 hours after detailing his once-in-a-generation big spending vision for America, today came the hard sell for Joe Biden, attending a rally in Georgia. But not the reception the president had hoped for. And attention now! And attention now! I've his spending pitch derailed friendly fire, demanding an end to America's detention system. I'm working on it, man. Give me another five days. 
There should be no private prisons, period. None, period. The blowtorch also being applied by Republicans, a narrowly split Congress demanding answers and consultation on the president's $7 trillion vision. Our president will not secure a lasting legacy through go-it-alone radicalism. With the focus largely domestic today, a major foreign milestone for America. U.S. troops today began withdrawing from Afghanistan, the first 100 of 2,500 force personnel on the move out. Ending a nearly 20-year war and fulfilling a key Biden promise. Thank you, David. Five people have been arrested in connection to the abduction of Lady Gaga's dogs, including the woman who returned them. Investigators believe the dog nappers didn't know the French bulldogs belonged to the pop star and the motive was for their value. The singer's dog walker, Ryan Fisher, was shot during the attack in Hollywood two months ago, describing the ordeal as a very close call with death. A destructive rampage has been caught on camera, a trio of men targeting a business, smashing it with rocks. They didn't appear to steal anything, but left an almighty mess. Cameron Bow reports. This was an act of intimidation. It's being investigated as a burglary. On March the 27th, three males in a silver hatch pulled up outside the factory of rock-solid civil construction. Without hesitation, they began collecting rocks from outside the business and then began to smash it up. The glass front door was shattered and then kicked in. The windscreen of a work truck was also smashed. Two of the men caused extensive damage to the office. Furniture was used to help destroy computers. The trio had their heads covered and were wearing gloves. They've gone and they've picked up the rocks from there and they've gone inside and smashed their way through. They seem to have an intent. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't look like they've just gone there and just done it off a whim. The trio managed to cover most of their features, although police suspect that at least one of them is Caucasian. It's believed that the business which specialises in concrete pouring was targeted, possibly as part of a revenge attack. Thank you, Cameron. Time to check finance now with James Tao at Comsec this afternoon. Hello to you, James. How have local shares finished the week and the month? Yeah, very good afternoon, Sally. Ended on a bit of a sour note. The ASX 200 falling about 56 points, or 0.8 of 1%. So today's declines did lead to our second weekly loss in a row. But despite that, the Aussie market lifting for the month of April up around 3.5%. Seven months in a row now that we've seen improvements in the market lifting around 20% in that time. So still a strong period for local shares. Today, though, one of the big losers was Beach Energy the oil and gas producer down 24% on some quarterly numbers. The uh, Aussie dollar is also rather steady, buying around 77.8 US cents. All right, thanks for that. James Tao from Comsec for us this afternoon. Sydney Higgins is still in that meeting with the Prime Minister in Sydney. She has just emerged, as you can see there, the first time since her shocking allegations about being raped in Parliament will bring you breaking news on what happened in the high-level talks. More on that shocking home invasion in Liverpool, a violent gang led by a woman kicking in a man's door. What were they after? We talk exclusively with the homeowner. The death toll is still climbing from the festival stampede in Israel. Heavy smoke causes two trucks to collide in a horrific highway crash. A special consumer report avoiding the insurance industry's latest ploy that could cost you thousands. Is this the future of flying? The technology to make sure you never forget your passport. And Australian scientists discover how a preterm birth can affect the child later in life. So we have all of that and plenty more for you in Sydney 7 News tonight at 6. All right, thanks for that, and we'll see you then. Hundreds of people have rolled up their sleeves for a free flu shot at Town Hall as doctors warn of a bad influenza season if people don't get vaccinated. Experts predict 25% fewer people will get the flu jab this year with COVID vaccine hesitancy still a major issue. In a typical influenza year, more people die from influenza than they do on the roads. So it, it is substantial. So the motivation is to reduce uh, mortality and morbidity in the community. If you missed out, the National Immunisation Program covers children under five years old and over 65s, pregnant women and Indigenous Australians. The advice is to space out the COVID jab and the flu vaccine by two weeks. 
It's time now to get a check on Sydney's traffic. Good afternoon, Marina Ivanovic here in the Sydney Blinds and Screens traffic chop at Chibbing Norton, Newbridge Road, a truck and car accident eastbound causing heavy delays and taking out lane two. This is Hall Road, the M4 westbound approaching James Roos Drive. You can see quite slow outbound from an earlier incident. Save up to 30% at Sydney Blinds and Screens plus exclusive offers on a comprehensive range of blind shutters, security doors and awnings. Shop Sydney Blinds and Screens today. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have given a rare glimpse inside their young family. William and Kate shared a video starring their three children as they celebrate 10 years of marriage. Sarah Greenalch has more from London. Well, these intimate moments, a rare glimpse into the Cambridge's private time as a family, were captured by a videographer last autumn at Norfolk at their family home on the beach nearby, showing the kids aged seven, five and three, running around, being chased by mum and dad, playing with each other, even toasting some marshmallows by the fire. It was released today uh, by the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge on their social media channels, thanking everyone for the kind messages received on their 10th wedding anniversary this little message saying we are enormously grateful for the 10 years of support we have received in our lives as a family. It was a decade ago today that the British public were given a public holiday so they could join in the celebrations as the future king and then Kate Middleton tied the knot at Westminster Abbey. The crowds in the British capital just couldn't get enough with more than a million people lining the streets of London. Some were even camping out the night before to make sure they had a great spot and it seems that the Cambridge's these days are just as popular, if not more so, with various polls showing the only royal family member loved more is the Queen. A new YouGov poll also showing that around three quarters of the population believe Kate will make a great Queen consort when the time comes. Thank you, Sarah. Next in Seven's Afternoon News, I'll have your weekend weather forecast. There are battles that become tales of legend when challengers aspire to become champions nothing this man can't do to be the best Bulldogs have won a classic you have to beat the best kings of the last decade the tigers and the dogs are going for the kill the champs are on the ropes will the tigers prove they're still the ones to beat then a clash of two titans what about that swans cats a weekend of footy for the ages starts tonight on seven mate gear up for winter at anaconda with mountain designs thermals now half price and 40 percent off all puffer jackets by the north face marmot heli hansen columbia and more head in store or shop online at anacondastores.com anaconda ben and jerry's topped Discover a delicious chocolatey fudge topping, then dig in to uncover even more with swirls of salted caramel and chocolate fudge brownies. Ben & Jerry's Topped. Layered with goodness from top to bottom. Fifi! Teddy! Jana! If you really like dogs, you want to give them triple protection against fleas and ticks, Hi. intestinal worms and deadly heartworm. So, if you're a dog person, you're a Simparica Trio person too. Got everything? Yeah. <gasps> Mum's birthday. Luckily, it's easy to send flowers same day Australia wide. Easyflowers.com.au. Let's stop hand washing, use our dishwashers more often, and save up to 200 litres of water a week. And when you buy the finished water donation pack exclusively from Coles, we'll donate 40 litres of water to farmers. Let's promise to make hand washing dishes history. Install Arise Solar's best-selling 6.6 kilowatt solar system, available now at new low price with manageable zero deposit payment plans available. Choose Arise Solar to live cleaner, greener and cheaper. Call 1800 Arise Solar. G'day, Sue. Join me for a walk? I'd love to, but my legs are aching. I have the same problem. You need Revitive. New Revitive Medic is the circulation booster that gets my leg muscles pumping, which could relieve aches and pains, swelling and now cramps. Plus, 
it's drug free. It's truth! Someone got Revita. And now discover new Medic Coach with personalised therapy for maximum leg pain relief. This Mother's Day, get your new Revitive Medic. A world of new talent is coming, and it could include you. It's your turn to blow the world away. Will you be the next champion of Australia's Got Talent? <laughs> Apply now at australiasgottalent.com.au. This weather report is brought to you by Revitive Circulation Booster. Get Revitive today. It just might change your life. Sit back and relax. It's your Revitive time. Cars and homes where insurance will only cover a fraction of the cost. Know how it could catch you out on 7 News at 6. In breaking news, former Liberal staffer Brittany Higgins has just given a statement after her meeting with the Prime Minister. Let's have a listen. Um, we had a very robust discussion. Um, the Prime Minister acknowledged that the, the system had let me down um, and we were in agreement that, that there are needs to be reform. Um, it was a difficult conversation to have at a personal level. It was very hard to come here. Um, but we had a discussion about what needs to happen in terms of the MOPS Act, where there needs to be better safeguards for staffers, where there are power dynamic issues in terms of parliamentarians and individual staffers. We also made... Um, was Brittany Higgins there speaking after her meeting with the Prime Minister Scott Morrison about the culture in Canberra. We'll have full details in, on that story in 7 News at 6. Let's have a look at the weather now and on the satellite we do have just some areas of cloud collecting along parts of the east coast. Tomorrow some morning smoke haze with a shower or two, top of 24 degrees. Looking ahead the smoke haze might just linger over the next handful of days into the weekend. Sunday a bit of haze and fog expected, 24 degrees and then temperatures should start to fine up with a few showers expected towards the end of the week. And that is Sydney's 4pm news for this Friday. Michael Usher and Angela Cox will bring you 7 News at 6. I'm Sally Barry. Stay with 7 out at Chase Australia and I'll see you tomorrow morning for Weekend Sunrise. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night. When you go into my house...